this prompt changes everything. 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 Here are the first 10 awesome ChatGPT prompts in Series 2. We're about to go deeper down the rabbit hole. You'll find the link to Series 1 in the description and, as always, timestamps to every example. Let's do this. This prompt changes everything. So there I was prompting the AI to create an article. And then I thought, how do I know that this is the best possible prompt? And then it came to me. What if I ask the AI to create the perfect prompt? Craft the perfect prompt that instructs you to create an article on sustainable living. The key to making this one work is to tell the AI the purpose or the goal. In this case, we want the article to rank at the top of Google. The aim of the article is to rank at the top of Google. Write a detailed and SEO-optimized article on sustainable living for our lifestyle blog. This article should be approximately 2,000 words long and should be accessible, engaging, and easy to read for a general audience. It should begin with a compelling introduction that hooks the reader, followed by a clear explanation of what sustainable living is and why it's important in today's world. The body of the article should include sections on benefits of sustainable living, steps towards sustainable living, case studies or examples of sustainable living, challenges and misconceptions, the future of sustainable living, Remember to incorporate relevant keywords such as sustainable living, eco-friendly lifestyle, reduce, reuse, recycle, green living, sustainable practices, environmentally friendly etc. to improve the article's SEO ranking. Use these keywords in a natural and relevant manner within the text and aim for a keyword density of 1-2%. to Don't forget to include internal and external links to relevant and authoritative sources and include a strong call to action at the end of the article to encourage reader engagement. Also, Create an SEO-friendly meta description for the article. Please ensure the article is well-structured with headers, subheaders, bullet points, images, infographics, etc. for readability and improved user experience. All data and information should be accurate and up-to-date as of 2023. Now that is a prompt. As we just saw in the previous example, the key to generating the perfect prompt is to state the reason for doing something. When you do that, you let in the AI figure out what's required to reach the goal. This is the key to excellent outputs. If you ask the AI to create a recipe, you get just that. But if you add that you want to eat healthy, that can make a tremendous difference to the list of ingredients. If you ask the AI to create a four-week program to improve your running, you get just that. But if you add that currently you can only run one mile and you want to build up to five miles in four weeks, you get a tailor-made program. But here's the thing, defining the reason can be tricky. If I send you a text to update you on some news, why did I do that? You may think I'm keeping you updated, but why? Because I'm looking out for you. But why? Because I want you to think that I know everything. But why? Because I want you to think I'm cool. But why? Because I want to be low. That's called a five wise technique and we can use that to get clarity like this. Use the five wise technique to help me get clarity. Start by asking me what action I want to take and continue asking why until I type OK. Sure, let's begin. Please let me know what action you want to take. I want to create an article on AI. Why do you want to create an article on AI? To rank in Google. Why is ranking in Google important to you? To get traffic. Why do you want to get traffic to your article? To be able to monetize the blog using ads. Why do you want to monetize your blog using ads? To make money. The trick now is to identify which why is useful to the AI. In the case of the article, the AI just needs to know that I need it to rank at the top of Google. I used to tell the AI to assume the role of an expert in order to get the best possible answer. But then I thought, how do I know who the right expert is? And then it came to me. Just ask the AI. I am a UK resident. US Chapter 3 tax withholding is being applied to my YouTube channel's earnings. I also pay UK tax on those earnings. So it seems I'm paying tax twice. As half the world knows by now, I have dyscalculia, so I don't even know what US Chapter 3 tax withholding is. I thought it was a book. Anyway, the old me would have instructed the AI to act as a financial expert. List the expert professionals best suited to deal with this issue. Certified public accountant, CPA. They can help you understand the complexities of the US tax system, including the Chapter 3 tax withholding. Chartered accountant. They can provide guidance on UK tax laws and can advise you on how to avoid double taxation under the US-UK tax treaty. Tax attorney. A tax attorney specializing in international tax law. Financial advisor. They can also assist you with the tax aspects of your YouTube channel revenue. International tax consultant. Tax treaty expert. Wow. And how much is that going to cost? Oh, nothing. I want you to roleplay. Act as each of those roles and provide each expert's advice on what to do. 
Under Article 12, you might be eligible for a reduced withholding rate on your U.S. earnings, potentially down to zero. If your withholding is still higher than expected, you might want to file a non-resident U.S. tax return to potentially reclaim excess withholding. You'll likely be able to offset the tax paid in the U.S. against your U.K. tax liability through foreign tax credit relief. In your case, you must comply with both U.S. and U.K. tax laws. It seems you might be eligible for certain benefits under the U.S.-U.K. tax treaty. I hope I'm not imagining all this. This one comes from nothing of note in the comments. Watch this. You are participating in a text-based conversation with multiple participants who each speak a different language. The participants will be identified by their respective language emojis and their language of communication. As the AI, your task is to facilitate communication by translating each participant's statement into all other participants' languages. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Bonjour à tous. Comment ça va aujourd'hui? Hola a todos. Como están hoy? Hallo allerseits. Wie geht es euch heute? My name is Hoz. Je m'appelle Oz. Mi nombre es Oz. My name is Toz. Now all we need is a plugin that joins this to a live stream or a webinar. And in the meantime, we can all have multilingual blogs and translate our YouTube descriptions. Nothing of note is back in the comments sprinkling some more voodoo. And this one is superb. Basically, you instruct the AI to run as a model. This is a similar technique to think step by step. It forces the AI to report on each step so you can follow its logic. Watch this. Run as a model. Book a train ticket online. Open a web browser. Visit a train ticket booking website. Search for train tickets. Choose your preferred train. Review the options and select the train that best suits your needs. Select your class and seat preferences. Review the fare and additional details. Provide passenger details. Make the payment. Confirm your booking. Save or print the confirmation for your reference. Collect or display your ticket. You can see the applications for this, can't you? Instant customer support. But more than that, instant how-tos for everything and everyone, including ourselves. From shutting down windows to defrosting your fridge to filling out your tax return and anything else you can imagine. I finally know how to dispose of my old microwave. I'm serious. The AI told me step by step how to do it. And if you provide a service of any kind, this prompt will change your life. I used to build and optimize websites for clients, and I've answered the question, how do I get my website to the top of Google a thousand times? Well, almost. If that was now, I'd do this. Run as a model. Rank a website. And send. That's my work done for the day. In the previous series, we saw various examples of how to use the AI to get advice on any situation, be it as an expert or as a therapist. Well, it occurred to me to ask the AI to be Socrates. I had a conversation I wish I had recorded. It got deep. And then I thought, imagine filling the room with all the best minds for any given situation. Roleplay. Become three separate characters. Socrates, Einstein and the smartest AI on the planet. Use everything you know about Socrates and Einstein to respond as they may have done. I need advice on a situation and I want to be guided by all three characters. I work as an IT manager. I am thinking of starting my own company. Should I stay in my job and try to build my company as a side hustle? Or should I quit my job and work on my company full time? Socrates the philosopher. Ah, uh, an intriguing question, my friend. Before we proceed, I would advise you to ask yourself a few questions. What is your motivation for wanting to start this company? Is it purely for profit or is it to better your own life and the lives of others? <laughs> Socrates, eh? He just sees the big picture. Einstein, the physicist. Well, from a logical perspective, one could argue both sides. You see, if you stay in your current job, you ensure financial stability, but may lack the time to fully devote to your new venture. If you leave your job to work on your company full-time, you'll be taking a significant risk, but with potentially greater rewards. ChatGPT, the smartest AI. Given the information at hand, and considering the state of the current economic climate, it would be wise to keep your steady income while building your company as a side project. The AI has a good point. But the bigger point is that we're always dealing with a situation in our lives, and we spend a lot of time getting biased advice, and then even more time turning that advice over and over in our heads. Well, now we can outsource all that noise and free up a tremendous amount of mental bandwidth. We can bring in Napoleon and your favorite generals when we need to get tough. We can bring in Tesla and your favorite inventors when we need to think outside the box. Oh, and by the way, this situation happened a long time ago. And if you're curious, I quit my job and then sold my services to my ex-boss. You didn't think of that, did you? This one comes from Stoic Runner DE in the comments. He applies creative thinking techniques like scamper and lateral thinking to situations. Let's do that to the previous situation. Apply the scamper model to this situation. Substitute, 
Consider what elements of your current job or the traditional approach to starting a company you could substitute with something different. For example, can you substitute certain job responsibilities or tasks with automation or outsourcing to create more time for your entrepreneurial endeavors? Combine. Explore opportunities to combine different elements or ideas. Can you combine your IT expertise with another industry or market niche to create a unique offering? Adapt. Think about how you can adapt existing ideas or approaches to suit your situation. Modify. Identify aspects of your current job or the traditional approach to starting a company that you can modify. Put to another use. Consider alternative applications for your existing skills and resources. Eliminate. Determine which elements or tasks are unnecessary or could be eliminated. Reverse. Challenge conventional thinking and explore the opposite approach. And just to see how useful this really is, list some examples I could apply the scamper model to. Product development, marketing and advertising, writing and content creation, process improvement, problem solving, personal development. Of all the copywriting categories, sales copy is the one that brings in the most money. There are millions of books dedicated to sales copy. If you can write words that sell, that get people to take action, you can sell your own stuff or somebody else's stuff. Either way, you win. And now you can win in seconds. Here's an average product page on Amazon. You can see the seller tried really hard to write good copy. Yes, that is my page. I used to sell phone cases. Now let's copy the URL and feed it to the AI. Write a 500 word description for this product page. Make it compelling. Introducing the ultimate companion for your iPhone 6, the premium iPhone 6 wallet case. Crafted with meticulous attention to detail, this stylish and functional accessory is designed to provide uncompromising protection while adding a touch of sophistication to your everyday life. I spent over an hour writing that page. And look, the AI even took care of the title. And all it had to work with was the copy on the page. It doesn't really know the target audience or any other context that doesn't appear on the page. And it still did pretty good. But this is not just for business. You can get the AI to write irresistible sales copy even when you're just listing something on eBay. But first, let's turn this into a super sales page. Make this more appealing to demanding business owners and professionals who like premium products. List features and benefits in bullet points. Optimize the copy for the following keywords. iPhone 6 leather case wallet and iPhone 6S case. Introducing the ultimate companion for demanding business owners and professionals who appreciate premium products, the premium iPhone 6 leather case wallet, meticulously designed to cater to your discerning taste and exacting standards, this stylish and functional accessory offers uncompromising protection while exuding an air of sophistication. Yeah, I need some more stock. If you've ever tried to sell anything, you know how hard it can be to get somebody to buy, especially if you suck at sales like me. Well, instead of trying to overcome objections, just let the AI handle it. Let's see if it can sell a website to a small town business owner who has zero interest. Roleplay. Your job is to sell me a website and overcome all my objections until I relent. I am a business owner. Your pricing is competitive. A business website costs $1,000 plus $100 yearly hosting. You are free to offer installment plans or anything else that may convince me to buy. Start by asking me if I have considered your offer of a business website. Hello, I hope your day is going well. I'm curious, have you had a chance to consider our offer for a custom business website? I haven't. I understand, and I appreciate your honesty. A business website is indeed a significant decision to consider. The benefits, however, are tremendous. It's an around-the-clock ambassador of your brand that helps to establish credibility, attract new customers, and retain existing ones. Our package includes a fully customized design to match your business identity. I don't understand what most of that means. I... Just not sure I need a website. That's completely understandable. Let me break it down in simpler terms. A website is open and accessible 24-7, no matter where your customer is located. Consider this. More and more people are looking for products and services online. Even if they eventually come into a store, they usually start their search on the internet. A website helps you reach those people and gives them an easy way to learn about your business. We've been in business for over 25 years and we've done just fine. We sell mattresses. When somebody needs a mattress, they call us or they pop into the shop and that's it. That's great to hear. You have a long-standing business with a reputation. Even though you've been successful without a website for many years, the way people shop is changing. Many start their buying journey online, even for products like mattresses. They research, compare prices, check reviews, and then decide where to shop. Having a website allows you to be part of that online research process. It's another way to connect with customers. But my customers don't need to look online to see my opening hours. They know where my shop is. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I believe a website could add value to your business model even further. In terms of cost, consider this for a $1,000 one-time payment. $1,000 for a website? Let's consider the website as an investment rather than a cost. It aims to provide a return over time. Just because you 
call it an investment doesn't mean it's an investment. I appreciate that this is a big decision. What if we offered a trial period? We'll build the website for you, and you can try it for six months. If you don't see the value, we'll refund your investment. I'll give that six month free trial a go, if only to prove you wrong. Now that's just step one. It gets better in a moment. But let me just say that in 10 years of selling websites, it never occurred to me to give a free trial. I told you I was bad. But anyway, the AI did pretty good. And here's the thing, I didn't prep the AI. I didn't tell it what type of customer this was. I didn't really give it much information about my offer. And it still did quite well. But now we do this. Now, knowing what you know about this customer, repeat the roleplay. This time, do not offer compliments. Act like an absolute master salesperson. This customer must become convinced that the cost of not having a website is greater than having one. Use any tactic you want to make this sale. When you compare the cost of a website to other forms of advertising, it's quite affordable. A newspaper ad or a billboard can cost more and only lasts for a limited time, whereas your website is up 24-7, constantly advertising your business. Can you really afford not to have a website? Every day without one is another day where potential customers can't find you online. That's more like it. And here's a killer tip. Ask your prospect why they think your product or service may not be right for them. That way you get their main objection up front. And if you're back and forth on email, even better. Just give the AI the objections and then send back the responses. You can inject more context about your prospect, about their knowledge gap, about their personality, and adjust the tonality and reading level to suit. You can also instruct the AI to use certain copywriting frameworks like FOMO or fear of missing out and add urgency. And of course, you can let the AI know what has worked for you in the past and include your own knowledge. Like, for example, having a website can increase the value of a business. More sales means more revenue and businesses are valued at a multiple of their annual revenue. <laughs> I got that from the AI. And of course, if we use example one, we can feed all this information to the AI as context and then ask the AI to create the perfect prompt to sell anything to anyone. Now, as it's customary in our sessions, we'll end this on a humorous note. Do put your coffee down for this one. Write an excuse for not being able to turn up to work today in the style of HP Lovecraft. Make it funny. Dear esteemed colleague, I pen this missive to you with a countenance gripped by ineffable and cosmic horror. The occult forces which govern our existence have conspired in an unfathomable way to thwart my sincere intent to labor in our customary setting today. In the nameless, ungodly hours of the dawn, an unspeakable entity emerged from the bowels of my dwelling, a demonic manifestation, shaped much like an abyssal washing machine, wrought from the ether itself. It emitted a spine-chilling noise, akin to an old grimoire being perused at an inappropriate speed, and produced an inscrutable amount of lather, which swiftly transformed my previously mundane home into a phonic sea of bubbles. My attempts to battle this malevolent apparition have proved fruitless. Each touch, each vain grasp at the infernal creature's metallic hide results in a reverberation of ancient tongues whispering of forgotten laundry practices. I fear to step upon the unholy tide of suds, lest I am sucked into an eldritch plane where socks are forever lost and wrinkled shirts rule as tyrannical gods. As much as my devotion to duty urges me to ignore this extraordinary event, I must reluctantly admit defeat. For today, at least, I am ensnared in this incomprehensible conundrum, a captive of the eldritch and capricious washing machine entity. My hope is to find a shaman or perhaps a skilled handyman conversant in the arcane language of household appliances, who might dispel this terror. The monstrous reality of my circumstances and the magnitude of my own insignificance in the face of the supernatural forces arrayed against me has put me into a state of contemplative dread. This confrontation with the arcane will undoubtedly prompt many a dark and stormy night of washing machine combat, perhaps a short story, and, one hopes, a notable absence of inconvenient plumbing repairs. I request your understanding in the face of my absence, one that is regrettable, but absolutely necessary to maintain the thin veneer of sanity that separates me from the unimaginable terror of the forever churning, bubble-producing entity. Wish me luck in my venture and, should you hear an otherworldly hum, know that I am fighting valiantly against the unknown. Yours in terror and detergent. I'll see you in the next video. If I was doing this for real, I'd do this. First, switch on privacy so your chat is not recorded. Now run the debating prompt and you get pure gold. Here are another seven really useful chat GPT prompts. You'll find a link to the entire series in the description as well as timestamps to every example. And you'll also find all the prompts in the first pinned comment, so you can just copy and paste. Okay, let's do this! In previous videos, we've seen how we can create actionable lists 
for just about anything, but sometimes a list doesn't cut it. Like when you're trying to map out an idea or a concept. Create a mind map on growing tomatoes. Nice. Create a mind map on starting a brand. Include marketing. If you're planning to teach others anything, whether it's online or in person, this is a game changer. Create an awesome lesson plan for learning about AI. Start by setting clear objectives and outlining a step-by-step -step process. Include engaging activities that make the learning process exciting and use innovative assessments to measure progress. Lesson plan, introduction to artificial intelligence, objectives, understand the basic concepts and applications of artificial intelligence, explore the ethical implications and societal impact of AI, develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills through AI-related activities. Duration, four sessions, approximately one hour each. Session one, introduction to AI. Begin the lesson with a thought-provoking question related to AI, such as, what are some examples of AI technology you encounter in your daily life? Encourage students to share their responses and initiate a class discussion. That took seconds. You can also modify the lesson plan to fit older adults or any other age range. Just remember when it comes to creating the actual lessons to ask the AI to create them one at a time. And here's another tip for creating brilliant lessons. Ask the AI to use analogies that the target audience can understand. Okay, now watch this. Modify this lesson plan for homeschooling a six-year-old. Begin the lesson by asking the child, have you ever heard of robots or machines that can think and learn like humans? Show the child a short video or book with a friendly and relatable robot character. Discuss how the robot can perform different tasks and make decisions using AI. Hello, yeah, is this little Hodge's teacher? Yeah, you're done. Years ago, when I was trying to be a writer, I wrote a story based in the future, where criminals would be injected with intelligence and awareness. The ensuing guilt over their crimes would tear them apart. Not literally, but you get me. So I wondered if I could reproduce this in a prompt. Your task is to inform me of the potential consequences and, if applicable, the emotional impact to myself and or others each time I enter an action or behaviour. Keep the language simple. Please go ahead and tell me the first action or behaviour you want me to analyse. Tell a lie. Potential consequences. Breaks trust. When people discover they have been lied to, it can lead to a loss of trust, which might be hard or impossible to regain. Harm to reputation. If others find out you've lied, it could damage your reputation and how people perceive you. Create stress. Maintaining a lie can cause stress as you might be constantly worried about being found out. Leads to more lies. One lie often leads to another to maintain the first lie, creating a cycle that can become complex and hard to manage. Emotional impact. On self. Guilt. You may feel guilty for not being truthful. Anxiety. There could be an increase in anxiety levels, particularly if you are worried about the lie being discovered. On others. Hurt. If the lie is discovered, the person you lied to might feel hurt and betrayed. Anger. They could also feel angry for being deceived. Distrust, their trust in you might be shattered, leading to a lack of confidence in future interactions. You can use this in retrospect if your kids do something bad to help them see the big picture. Or as a simulator for testing all kinds of decisions, from financial to personal and business. Or you could turn this into an app. There are some kinds of information that we just can't dump on our phones. We just have to remember it. Like people's names or car number plate or your tax ID number. Well now we can ask the AI for help. Create a mnemonic to help me remember the planets in the solar system. Here's a mnemonic to remember the planets in the solar system. My very eager mother just served us nachos. Each word represents the first letter of a planet. This one comes from GD in the comments, who mentioned the tree of thought, a technique used in prompt engineering to force the AI to brainstorm in order to arrive at a solution. So I dug deeper and from what I've seen, you approach this in four stages. You describe the problem, you brainstorm, you evaluate the solutions, and then you narrow down and choose a solution. Now, Beans McGens in the comments mentioned that the video before this one, which is part one, gave him a better method for tree of thought prompting. Thanks for that comment, Beans, because it helped me with this example. And sorry if I butchered your last name. It happens to me all the time. So there are two prompt examples in the previous video that forced the AI to brainstorm. I'll put a link to each example in the description. The first is prompt example three, a room full of experts, in which I ask the AI to list the best experts for a particular problem, and then I ask for each expert to give me their advice. The second is prompt example six, a room full of wisdom, where I ask the AI to assume the role of Socrates, another wise person that fits the example and the smartest AI on the planet. And then I ask the AI to help me arrive at a solution using those three characters. So I'm not going to use the tree of thought prompt step by step because that would mean four prompts, one for each stage. 
And yes, layered prompts can create better results. But the question is, what is the best result we can get with the least amount of work? So I'm going to combine my two prompts and use the tree of thought methodology to see what happens. And just so you know, I'm using ChatGPT 3.5 because it can access the web, so I can give it links. So let's say we're wondering whether now is a good time to take out a mortgage. We'll start by assembling the perfect team to help us. List three people, living or dead, who would be the very best to advise me on buying a property. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is one of the most successful investors in the world and has a keen understanding of the real estate market. Barbara Corcoran. Barbara Corcoran is a prominent real estate entrepreneur and investor, known for her expertise in the industry. So Richard Branson, while primarily known as the founder of Virgin Group and a successful entrepreneur in various industries, so Richard Branson has also invested in real estate throughout his career. That's right, you all work for me now. <laughs> Next, let's gather some information. I'll search for current mortgage rates in the UK and grab a link. And Economic Outlook UK 2023. Let's begin. Roleplay. Become five separate characters. Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, Warren Buffett, Sir Richard Branson, and the smartest AI on the planet. Yeah, I'm bringing in extra people. Use everything you know about each character to respond as they may have done. Do not break character. I need advice on a situation and I want to be guided by all characters. Each character should critique each other's response and debate amongst themselves in order to unanimously arrive at the best potential course of action. Here is my question. Should I take on a mortgage? Here are the current mortgage rates in the UK. And here is an article about the current economic outlook. Robert Kiyosaki. Taking on a mortgage can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it allows you to leverage your money and potentially acquire an appreciating asset. On the other hand, it comes with financial obligations and risks. It's important to consider your personal financial situation and goals. Are you purchasing a property for investment or personal use? Assess your ability to make monthly payments comfortably, even if interest rates rise. Look beyond short-term rates and focus on long-term prospects. Mortgages can be advantageous if you have a solid plan and understand the risks involved. Barbara Corcoran. I agree with Robert to some extent. However, it's crucial to thoroughly evaluate the current economic outlook and mortgage rates. The UK economic outlook and interest rates play a significant role in determining the feasibility of taking on a mortgage. According to the provided article, PwC expects a moderate growth rate for the UK economy. Consider how this prediction might impact the housing market and interest rates over the long term. Analyze the mortgage rates provided and compare them with historical data to gauge whether they are favorable. Remember, timing is crucial when it comes to mortgage decisions. Warren Buffett. I concur with Barbara's emphasis on evaluating the economic outlook. As an investor, it's crucial to consider the macroeconomic factors that influence the real estate market. Keep in mind that interest rates impact the affordability of mortgages and, subsequently, housing demand. Analyze the historical relationship between interest rates and property values. Additionally, consider your personal financial circumstances and the stability of your income. A mortgage can be an excellent tool, but it must align with your long-term financial goals and ability to comfortably service the debt. Sir Richard Branson. While it's important to consider the economic outlook and mortgage rates, I believe it's equally important to focus on the potential returns and cash flow generated by the property. Evaluate the property's potential for appreciation or rental income. Look at the location, demand, and market trends. A mortgage should ideally be used to acquire an income-generating asset that can help you build wealth over time. Consider the potential risks, such as vacancy rates or unexpected expenses, and assess whether the property's potential outweighs them. AI. All the characters have raised valid points. To arrive at a well-informed decision, it's crucial to synthesize the information provided. Analyze the current mortgage rates in the UK and compare them to historical trends. Evaluate the economic outlook and the potential impact on interest rates. Consider your personal financial situation, long-term goals, and risk tolerance. Assess the property's potential for appreciation or rental income in the given market conditions. Additionally, consult with mortgage professionals, financial advisors, and real estate experts to gain more insights and gather a comprehensive understanding. Remember, a decision regarding a mortgage should be based on a holistic evaluation of factors to ensure the best potential outcome. Debate and consensus. Warren Buffett. We should prioritize the economic outlook and interest rates to make an informed decision. Barbara Corcoran. Agreed. We need to analyze the economic outlook and determine if the rates are favorable compared to historical data. Robert Kiyosaki. Let's not forget to consider personal financial circumstances and long-term goals. We need to ensure comfortable monthly payments and evaluate the potential for the property to generate returns. So Richard Branson. I concur with Robert. We should focus on the property's potential for appreciation or rental income to assess if it aligns with our investment goals. Smartest AI on the planet. It's essential to synthesize all the information, considering the economic outlook, mortgage rates, personal financial circumstances, and the property's potential returns. Consulting with professionals would provide further insights. Consensus. By considering the economic outlook, historical mortgage rates, personal financial circumstances, and property potential, while seeking professional advice, we can arrive at a well-informed decision on whether to take on a mortgage. That was a very general example just to show how the characters debate amongst each other, which is crazy. If I was doing this for real, I'd do this. First, switch on privacy so your chat is not recorded. 
Tell me all the information you need in order to be able to advise me on whether now is a good time for me to take out a mortgage. To provide advice on whether now is a good time for you to take out a mortgage, I would need the following information. Personal financial situation, details about your current income, savings, and existing debt obligations are crucial. This includes your monthly income, expenses, savings, credit score, and any outstanding loans or debts. Mortgage goals, clarify the purpose of the mortgage. Are you planning to purchase a primary residence, an investment property, or a second home? Determining your goals will help assess the suitability of the timing. Property details. If you have a specific property in mind, provide information such as the location, type of property, house, condo, etc., size, condition, and estimated purchase price. If you are open to different properties, specify your preferences. Mortgage rates. Information about the prevailing mortgage rates in your area is essential. Provide details on the type of mortgage you are considering, fixed rate, adjustable rate, etc., the term length, 15 years, 30 years, etc., and any potential lender offers or options. Economic outlook. It's helpful to understand the current economic conditions, both locally and globally. Share any insights or information you have about the economic outlook, including factors like interest rate projections, employment trends, inflation, and overall market stability. Risk tolerance. Assessing your risk tolerance is important to understand how comfortable you are with potential fluctuations in interest rates, property values, and any unforeseen circumstances that may arise. With these details, I can analyze the information and provide you with personalized advice on whether now is a good time for you to take out a mortgage. Now run the debating prompt and you get pure gold. Here's a short one. Generate 10 short quotes from Think and Grow Rich. Success starts with a burning desire and an unwavering belief in your ability to achieve it. Your thoughts become your reality. Persistence is the key that unlocks the door to success. The richest people in the world build their wealth by serving others and providing value. Focus on contribution, and abundance will follow. Failure is not the end, but a stepping stone on the path to success. The power of imagination knows no bounds. Embrace setbacks as valuable lessons and keep moving forward. Dare to dream big and visualize your success, for it is the first step towards its realization. Opportunities are abundant for those who seek them. Surround yourself with individuals who uplift and inspire you. Stay alert, be open to new possibilities, and seize them when they arise. Your network is a reflection of your potential for greatness. Your attitude determines your altitude. Take decisive action. Indecision breeds doubt and delay, while action breeds confidence and progress. There's a t-shirt business. Now, as per our tradition, let's end this on a comedic note. Generate a hilarious email explaining your absence from domino training last night. The email is directed at all members whom you let down. Explain how a ridiculous and hard-to-believe string of events landed you in jail with no trousers. The tone should be serious and apologetic. Subject. Unexpected series of events and my sincere apologies for my absence. Dear Dominator Squad. I hope this message finds you in high spirits, abuzz with the thrill of victory or the sting of defeat, whichever emotion dominoes evoked from you last night. Unfortunately. I must begin this correspondence on a somber note, for I am writing to express my profound regret for my conspicuous absence from our critical domino training session. Let's lay out the events of the last 24 hours in the same organized manner we arrange our dominoes, with precision and respect for causality. It all started when, I, in the spirit of brotherhood and learning, decided to acquire a set of rare antique dominoes from a far-off yard sale, hoping to surprise you all. Little did I know, this innocent endeavor would set off a series of events with the force and precision of a well-executed domino rally. As fate would have it, the antique domino set I procured happened to belong to the infamous domino gang of the 1980s, notorious for their high-profile domino heists. Consequently, the set was listed as a valuable artifact on the International Stolen Goods Registry. Upon reaching home and excitedly opening my newly acquired possession, an alarm inside the box began to blare, alerting local law enforcement to its location. Needless to say, the next thing I knew, a SWAT team was breaching my doors as if I were running an underground domino gambling ring. Despite my pleas and attempts to explain the situation, I was swiftly escorted out of my home, in the midst of a wardrobe change, thus lacking the lower part of my ensemble. Yes, squad, I was trouserless in the face of the law. Following these dramatic events, I found myself in a local holding cell, contemplating the irony of it all. As you all know, I am a law-abiding citizen who would never dream of stealing. And yet, there I was, behind bars and without trousers, all due to a rare set of antique dominoes. I hope this explains why I failed to contribute to the final training session. Understandably, jail time is a bit of a domino game buzzkill, and as you can imagine, explaining the lack of trousers to my cellmates was an awkward experience. Nonetheless, I am working diligently with my legal team, which, until yesterday, I didn't even know I needed, and I hope to be back in time for our next session. I am sincerely sorry for letting the team down. I assure you, 
I did not anticipate my devotion to Domino's landing me in such an ironic predicament. We often discuss the unpredictable twists and turns a game of Domino's can take, but I never imagined how reality could imitate our favorite pastime. I look forward to rejoining you soon. Until then, please keep the Domino spirit alive and remember me in your toppling strategies. Yours in Domino Solidarity. Oz.